Good morning, everyone, and I'm Tina Nixon standing in for Michael Laws, who's standing in for Sean Plunkett. Uh, and it's it's good to be back, um, but my God, what a one hell of a week. Uh, as most of you know, I live in the Wairarapa, uh, and our coast has been absolutely devastated uh, by Cyclone Gabriel. And I have friends and relations up in the Hawke's Bay and further up to Gisborne and also in Northland. Uh, so like a lot of people, we're still waiting to hear from some people who we're not sure are safe yet. Uh, and it's a, it's a big waiting game. Uh, and earlier this week, I got a call from a friend of mine, uh, Larissa Callett, uh, who sings under the name of Lady Larissa. Now, last week, Larissa was looking forward to headlining at Art Deco Week in Napier. And she had parked herself up in, in uh, Havelock, I think it was, and she was heading over to Napier to stay in a hotel to start the week-long gigs and actually probably a month of uh, lots of events in the Hawke's Bay area. And she rang me to say that she had just got out um, after tooling around in a car trying to find a way basically through the morass of rain and mud and everything. So she arrived on my doorstep and she's been there for the last two days. So I've got her in the studio this morning, just like to say good morning Larissa. Mm, morning Tina. So uh, Larissa and I go back to our early days in radio in Invercargill in a little radio station called Fovo Radio and she did the midnight to dawns and I was the news editor come journalist and occasional talkback host. Um, so that's how our, uh, our, our relationship started and it sort of drifted for a long time and then Facebook sort of reunited us probably about 10 years ago. Yeah, that's right. And um, so we've been in close contact and Rissa's come to stay with me a few times. And um, look, I'll just, I'll just move over to Larissa now and I just want to, Larissa to tell us just what happened when you realised, when, when was it that you actually realised shit was going down and what happened after that to you arriving on my doorstep? Right. Well, we'd had all the, the warnings of being prepared and I felt that I was prepared and people were talking amongst each other um, the previous night and saying, you know, have you got this, have you got that, and working out. For, for some reason, we were thinking, well, high tide is a thing, you know, high tide's going to be around 12.30. And where were you at that point? I was in a place called Te Wonga, which is um, on the coast near Homoana. Uh, the Tukituk River crosses over, but if you want to get then get to Hastings or Clive, you'd have to cross the Tukituk. So I was based there at first, and the the... First bad thing was hearing the noise. The noise of it woke me, and I thought, oh, this is it's not not normal. But I still didn't realise the enormity of it. And waiting for sunrise, you know, you can't go anywhere really if it's dark anyway. So once it was sunrise, actually I was checking out of the place I was staying in that morning so the storm was happening and I was putting things in my car to leave to go to Napier to check into the hotel that Art Deco would provide for me. But then I realised that things were really bad because, of course, I couldn't get to Napier. You know, I could, couldn't cross the bridges. And because we had no cell service and no power, we had no information. I couldn't make informed decisions and that meant more time on the road, which I didn't want to be on the roads. It was scary. And yet I would think, well, I know if I go down Lawn Road to the main road of Clive, I can cross that bridge. Wrong. And there would be civilians turning you around saying you're not going to be able to cross. OK, have to think. No GPS. I'm a local, you know, I'm about a third generation Hawke's Bay person. So I have a pretty good idea of how to get places and I just kept getting stopped and turned around and seeing orchards with the trees flattened, the mud, the water. My car's dead now, you know, I think the water killed my car. Um, and then I worked out, okay, well, there's one bridge that's still open, Waipawa and Waipokoro was the only way out. And because I didn't have a place to stay, I made it for that. And then messaged you. <laughs> there was a night in between where somebody took me in. 
Yeah. But I was prepared to sleep in my car. Yeah. And you've got people you're still trying to contact and haven't been able to make contact with yeah. you sing with. Yeah. Um, and that whole music community, which lives in and around that area, that would have supported um, the whole of the Art Deco thing and relations. You still haven't really there's managed a lot of to people. find everyone, have you? Yeah, there's a lot of people missing. And you can see the news and the reports on the news, but when you have friends and uh people who are still amongst it and they get a little bit of cell phone service and might post something on an Instagram story and say, my flatmate's still missing, I'm in Fern Hill. Yeah. It breaks your heart. Yeah. And I think that these first few days I've been in shock in a little bit. Yeah, you have. And and um, this morning I just started to feel more heavy about it. Mm. Uh, it's hard to describe. Yep. And, and, you know, having been through the Christchurch earthquakes, it does take a long time for, for people to come to the realisation of what's happening around them. And and I, I noticed there's a lot of people on um, the internet saying, don't contact us, we're just trying to survive at the moment and nothing mm. that you can actually do will help. Mm. Um, so don't just say how we are and things like that. And I think that's a really interesting point. Um, that being said, there is other people out there who are saying we can't survive and we need help. So there's a range of responses required in this and some deft thinking around how government's really going to respond. And have you have you had any feedback from the people you have been able to contact who feel like things are getting better and things are moving? Not particularly. Yeah. I think that there are pockets who have had power resumed, but with the substation by Napier being out... I don't think those are parts that you can just go and buy no. readily. That, that is such a long-term thing. Um, Napier seems to be worse than Hastings. They they do open up the connectivity sporadically, I see now, which helps. But, I mean, I hear that there have been people fighting at Pack and Save, mm. looting yeah. the ugly side. The ugly side. Yeah, no, there definitely is an ugly side. And in terms of my connections, as I said, there's a range of people and friends and family who have been up there. We had um, some friends from Southland who were having their wedding anniversary in Napier and couldn't get out for a couple of days. Quite a frightening experience for them, but they're fine. They're all good and safe. And my partner has an investment in an apple orchard up in the Dartnall Valley. And we were really worried about the staff. You know, it's pretty hard not knowing. Um, but in the last couple of days, we've managed to get some news about them and they're all good. Um, the yeah. orchard's dis- is probably pretty much um, half destroyed. Mm. Um, and I've got another friend who lives in the Dartmoor and she's lost houses, they've lost the vineyard, they've probably lost the apple orchard. And um, she's just celebrating the fact that she's alive. She's an incredibly yeah. positive person. Um, but, you know, it's just hard because you've got to sort of sit back and just wait for people to tell you what they need and when they need it. And... I can start to see some gaps already in the emergency response. Mm. Um, And I think initially uh, what we've done is really good and there's some amazing work happening out there with the Defence Forces getting to start to places. But this is an an event of a magnitude I think is probably even bigger than Christchurch because it's so far spread. And maybe it doesn't have the same um, scale in terms of the number of people affected um, because... Christchurch was an urban area, but this is going to be much more difficult because of the various locations that it's happening to and the infrastructure, which you came into direct contact with. Yes. When you've got a bridge out, yeah. it doesn't take just the bridge out. It takes yeah. the telecommunications out. It takes everything out. That's right. um, and that makes life really difficult. You're with Tina Nixon and Larissa Callett on the platform. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, uh, Larissa uh, is a singer, an entertainer. Um, she has uh, she's opened for Michael Bublé. She's travelled the world internationally, and uh, she actually had only just literally come back from Hollywood um, for her Art Deco season, which is more than just the Art Deco week. It's and normally lots and lots of events. So when did you find out that that was finished with? I found out, well, I worked it out. You know, it was obvious that it couldn't possibly go ahead. Like most festivals, they start building the infrastructure days ahead, and so it would have been impossible. Health and safety, lack of power. So I'd gathered that much, and I was also aware that with Art Deco 
having no power in Napier, their comms were going to be little to none. So um, it was sad because it was also cancelled previously. So this is the rollover from the last Art Deco Festival, which was cancelled. For a lot of musicians and entertainers, it's our biggest earning uh, week of the year. Um, and well, certainly they they book me well. Mm. And uh, we prepare and we spend money to mm. be ready for it and travel and such. So um, I I just knew, and actually the Art Deco press release was handwritten. It's now famous, you know. It's, it's it? travelling all around the internet, yeah. Oh. And just tell us a little bit about that, because it was quite an extraordinary thing, and I think probably made people realise just how bad things were in comms. Yeah, it was a handwritten uh, note, press release, and then someone had taken a photo of it mm. and were able to upload that. So that does give an indication of how bad things were. Yeah, are. and it's interesting because there's some bits of communication coming through. So you talk about um, what's what's the app is one of yeah. the things that seems to be working better than others. Yes, um, the of of the the providers, for example, I was on two degrees. Forget about. Oh, am I allowed to say this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Forget about it. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't get any connectivity at all. Yeah. And then someone jumped online and was just posting on Facebook, I'm okay. By the way, Spark is working better. Buy a prepaid Spark SIM card before they run out. So I um, I went to a petrol station, station and waited in line for ages in Hastings and got myself a little Spark card and it works a bit better. That was interesting to me to think, oh, yeah, it's another thing in an emergency. If you've got two phones, grab a prepaid card if you can and chuck it in your burner phone and see which one works best. Makes mm. all the difference in the world sometimes. Yeah, because we've become so dependent on our cell phones. When mm. the cell phone goes down, it's, that's it. I mean, we've got Starlink at home, and I know Starlink's played quite a major part in keeping comms open in some of these areas um, because people in the rural areas were very quick to adapt to Starlink, um, which is mm -hmm. this is um, Elon Musk's uh, network um, and works really, really well uh, for us in the Wairarapa and uh, is a little, probably a little bit more expensive, but when you're wanting to download lots of big documents like we do, um, it, it works, and it's um, it's been noticeable that there has been some good comms where Starlink is, and it sort of makes you wonder, when we were talking about resilience a while back, um, when I was a counsellor in the Wairarapa, we talked about satellite and how a part it would play, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's I think there's a real need for organisations uh, that are involved in emergency responses to look at alternatives like that to help communications. Absolutely. And it's another um, avenue of that would be communications from, say, for example, myself to you. Like mm. We can't use the phone. I don't know. I, I, someone thought I was missing and I was on the other side of a bridge that I couldn't cross. And I was thinking, gosh, how, how did they do it in the old days? How could, do we need pigeons? Is it smoke <laughs> signals? Can I use a drone messenger service? There's yeah. got to be a better way of doing that. Yeah, there is. And and I think that's maybe where those satellite um, communications come in. Um, that being said, I noticed that Kira McNulty said they were using satellite phones and they were finding them dropping out. And that is true. If you haven't got line of sight, I think it is, mm -hmm. um, you have a problem with sat phones. Um, I've used them in, in remote locations quite a lot. And uh, they're good when they're good. You can get communications out at some part during the day, though. So they are definitely a good tool to have in that in that toolbox for communications. Um, but they're not a guaranteed continual supply of coverage, uh, communications coverage. And online we have Martin Devlin. How are you, Marty? Tina, pretty ballerina, yes she <laughs> is the queen have... of the dancing floor, this is the <laughs> moment you've waited for, we could be forever. <laughs> we didn't do a song for Larissa, that's a bit rude. Uh, yeah. Sorry Larissa, sorry. I'm no, the, nothing rhymes with Larissa. <laughs> 
Larissa Ramata. Kiss her. Oh, stop it. Ben <laughs> just whispered that in my ear. Stop he just it. said kiss her. Stop it, Ben. Uh, this is stop what happens it, when you mate. turn off and on, Tina. Little known fact, Marty's always singing. You just flick Hawk and on and it starts coming through. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you hey, going to coming up this some, afternoon, I've been watching some... Oh, just before we do that, I've been watching some just the most insane stuff on Twitter. Uh, these absolute morons in vehicles going through flooded roads and over bridges and that with kids in the car posting these videos. Do people not realise that a car, a car can not front a flood? It, the flood will sweep it away, Oops. flip it over, and you will all drown, you dickheads. Do you, uh, people that stupid? You got kids in the car. I just watched one where the water's coming up to the seats. They got their they got their feet on the dashboard. Yeah. And I'm saying, Mum and nah. Dad, this is absolutely culpable homicide if these kids die in this car. Is what it is. And what are yeah. people, are people? However, that there stupid? is the other side of that too. I mean, people don't realise how quick water rises and Larissa was in. Yeah. Well, yeah. in that case, they're dumb as well. They're stupid. No, I mean, no, water, Larissa guess wasn't what happens dumb. with it. Her, the water water that rises was, quickly. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. You no, know what no, a tsunami no, no. looks like? Do you know what a flood looks like? No. It happens in an instant. Yes, I totally agree with you, but actually you don't need much water to get in your car to wreck it, as Larissa has found out. So no, she no, went no, through water that Look, wasn't I actually like drove, I drove the HQ. Amazing. I drove the HQ through the Wangapeka River in Mochueka about 30 years. I'm thinking that here I was, I was showing off to the girlfriend, and uh, very, very quickly, with stuck on rock, uh, water up to oh it's in the car oops oh water up to steering wheel it happens that goddamn quickly yeah, people yeah, yeah. if you see water either reverse the hell out of there or get your people out of the car and go in the other direction fast yeah yep. there you go I tell you what you get practical advice on this Ben is what you do when you get me on board what are we talking about Tina we're just talking about the hum drum who cares whatever because it's only there to distract you from the other crap that goes on every day in your life. Silly old dumb sport. That's what we do. We just talk about sport. And hopefully for three hours it might provide a distraction. But it's, it's, it's that unimportant. It's that important. It's that vital. It's that who cares. It's that essential. It's that crucial. But in the end, is it? No. Of course it's not. No, no. but it does There's give a you a joy going spot. On. People love it and they what need to be able to do things they love. Yeah. So the I love rubbing we my joy spot. What about you, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was rubbing his joy spot with Larissa's songs. What does that okay. mean, Mark? Right. Am I missing something here? I'm, yeah, just, actually, I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to connect with the youth. Can't you see? I'm trying to connect with what I'm trying <laughs> to do. It's not going to happen, Marty. It ain't going to happen. Okay, You're an right. old fart like us. It's, look, it is true, <laughs> isn't it? And I've started to admit it for the first time ever because I turn 59 next week. And, you know, oh, you're Tim and Larissa, you'll be thinking this as well. I mean, you know, we look at Ben with your fresh face, shirt unbuttoned down to your tit, all of that kind of stuff. It's not going to last, mate. And so you turn into people like me. That's what happens. That's why I'm making the most of it now, Martin. <laughs> okay. Well played. <laughs> well Youth played. is wasted on the young, isn't it? It's just totally wasted on the young. Yeah. Hey, anyway, I yes. want to know. So just, you know, coming over the hill and, you know, living in Upper Hutt as long as I did and coming over that hill, what kind of damage to the uh, to the Limitaka? Because nobody's really talked about that. Has there been any no, big slips? No, no. Uh, no, so basically, um, well, like I live in the lee side of the of the of a mountain called the Rangi Tumau. And so... All of the eastern side of the wider upper copped it and a bit down south. But the rain ba band of rain or the band of the storm never actually got over to the Tararuas. So okay. the uh, Rumatuckas actually didn't get, got a few rocks down because it was a bit of rain, but it wasn't anything like it happened in the past. So it's fine. Um, That's it, spooky, it has isn't been it? And you've seen that a lot around the country. Well, you see that around yeah. Napier and that. There is, you know, and you see that out on the west coast, Piha, Muriwai. And yet, you know, and yet there are other parts of all, which are completely unscathed. It's just been the the most weird thing. Weird. Yet, it's almost like you're driving around, and especially up here at the moment, like it's sunny today. The roof's not leaking for a first time in a couple of weeks, and and we're sitting here <laughs> going, "What?" Yet at the at the same time, I just know there's just been devastation everywhere. And the heartbreaking thing for me is, look, as always, Tina, is that you know the property can be reclaimed. I hope the roads will eventually get fixed. But the loss of the life and the loss of the volunteers and the loss of the uh, the kids. Yeah. Oh, and we've still got more to come, Marty. It's, yeah, we've still fear. got more to come. I fear, I fear. And look, and I just, you know, it's not a time to point fingers and it's not a time to remonstrate right. against administrations. I mean, these are the times that you really just hope that, I mean, just stop the polit political bollocking and just get on with it. I mean, we're a small country of five million people. If we can't actually decide today that what we actually do need is to fix ourselves and to make this country better for us. Well, I don't understand I don't understand where your head is at if you can't actually buy into that bit. I no, and Jerry Brownlee was really good at that today. He did not politicise things and he actually commended the approach to things so far and said, this is really hard. 
And I think people are yeah, going to understand that. None of that. us are ready for this. And you've got to remember, I mean, the Prime Minister isn't an engineer. He's not a civil defence expert. I mean, you know, what we're asking people, in the way that a lot of people get into Parliament these days, and you know, Tina, I mean, you poor tea at the Labour Party conference for 20 years, all of a sudden you're the Finance Minister. I mean, you, you know, <laughs> hello, you know, no one's, no, one's, no one's got a list Best of qualifications line of the week, here. Best line of the week. <laughs> Woohoo! But, 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 but no one's here with a list of qualifications going, oh, shit, I've actually solved that civil defence crisis. I repaired that bridge. I mean, you know, so, you know, we're all in the same yeah. position. We've got to listen to experts. We, you know, and but hopefully more than that, there's just massive empathy and humanity, which is why I'll finish mm. on this. If you're looting, I'm shooting. That's all there is to it. You're looting, I'm shooting. Yeah, I, I agree would, with you. Card, yep. bl- card blanche license yep. to the co- oh, look, rubber bullets. Get yep. one of those up the backside and see whether you're going to do it again next week. But I mean, if, if yep. there are, if there are people out there that are such scum suckers in this world, they don't belong in the rest of the world that the rest of us want to live in. So draw the line. Should be automatic see, jail. Oh, Yep. Totally no, no, I just think a rubber, a rubber bullet will last longer than a jail sentence because they'll be out in a couple of weeks. A rubber bullet lasts a bloody long time. Ask anyone that's received. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> so you're in for Michael. Michael's in for dear leader. Um, are we all yep. back to normal on Monday? Okay. I think so. Monday's good. Tuesday, um, I'm not sure what's happening, but um, we'll see. Um, but, you know, it's always I'm, a pleasure I'm having you on the radio. I love, I love you on the radio. I love listening oh. to you on the radio. Larissa, she, tell her how good she is today because she's damn good. You're amazing. No, she's it's amazing. <laughs> Well, that was a big group, right? Wow. Wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ben <laughs> loves it. He loves looking. He loves watching from the outside. Look at him. Oh, yeah, go on, Ben. He'll love it. Oh, oh, look, I've already been told off of my impro- inappropriate language. You're, you can... Oh, uh, you, you, you too. Yeah, yeah, Marty. Both cut from the same cloth, I'll tell you that much. More power to you, Tina. I love you being on air on the platform. I love it. <laughs> Cool. Okay, Marty. Well, you, you have a really good show and a bloody great weekend. Will do. And um, okay. go and Thank watch you. some of that sport.